Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. Hello, a very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmo Chisito. On Spectrum tonight, what is the civil society perspective on the public finance bill? How will it affect the budget process and how revenues from oil and other sources will be managed and utilized? Civil society organizations are expressing concern about a bill now before Parliament titled the Public Finance Bill 2012, which they say has far reaching implications on the budget process, the management of oil revenues, and the power of Parliament to carry out its oversight functions. The bill, among other things, seeks to provide for fiscal and macro management and also establish the Petroleum Holding Fund. Besides regulating how the money will be managed, it also seeks to, re to repeal the Budget Act and the Public Finance and Accountability Act of 2003, which is the law under which accounting officers are held accountable on how they utilize uh, funds appropriated by Parliament. After thorough scrutiny of this bill, civil society organizations under their umbrella organization, the Civil Society Budget Action Group, or CSBUG, have come up with a position paper in which they forward their concerns about the bill. As they said to advise Parliament and the Executive about what needs to be done. This bill, which was read for the first time, is still stuck in the Committee of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, and members of Parliament are required to scrutinize it on top of listening to views from stakeholders involved in the budget process. Tonight we hear the views of civil society to try and establish what proposals they are putting forward and why they think this bill, if not amended, may have serious implications on how public funds. Are managed in the country. Our guest tonight, Mr. Julius Mukunda, is a senior programs director at Forward, that's the Forum for Women and Democracy. Yeah, he's also coordinator of the Civil Society Budget Action Group. We're also joined by Mr. Kap Julius Kapwepwe Mishambi, director of programs at the Uganda Tech Network. You're most welcome, Mr. Kapwepwe. Thank you and good evening, listeners. Well, there are two Julius. Mr. Mukunda, what are your views on the finance bill? <laughs> what is the finance bill? Uh, because I, I think, Edmund, the first thing is also that the public is not aware about this finance bill. Because there are so many laws in this country that are going on, we make so many laws. But uh, what is the finance bill? And basically, is that in the layman's language, this is the uh, bill that is trying to, that the government wants to put in place on how it will collect the money and how it will spend money. Because in between, of course, there is managing the economy. So, but basically, in the layman's language, how government is going to collect the money from where, by what means, and the rest, but also how government is going to start spending, spending the money. And I could tell you that to me and among others is that this bill is the most important law in this country, second to the constitution of this country. The constitution is supreme, but this law is, the, is going to be the second, simply because it's going to determine how we and you, the, our standard of living, is going to be affected because we depend on how government raises money and how government spends money. And therefore, government brought up this bill uh, in a view of working out a number of things. They have three reasons as to why they have brought this into the bill. Number one is that there are defects in the existing laws. But up to now, we are, we are still want to find out which defects are there in the existing laws. And that's one of our major concerns, because the, those defects in the existing laws have not been mentioned. But it mentions other two areas, the East African integration and also the, the coming up of these oil revenues. As The, as the key reasons as to why a new bill, uh, a new law on finance, public finance management uh, is concerned. So, that's number one. So, what does this new bill bring? Uh, I will talk about one of them and probably my colleague also could talk about that. One is that this law brings up what we call the charter of fiscal responsibility. In essence, is that it is, it is the law, the, the bill is proposing that for every new government to come in, To power, it must come up with its fiscal objectives, what it intends to achieve in terms of how are you going to collect money, how are you going to spend it, what kind of economic outputs are you going to achieve at the end of, of your term. It's a five year plan. 
so that all the money, the annual budget, the national budget framework papers and everything are key in ensuring that we achieve that, that, that those, those physical objectives. And that this, this chapter, the quality chapter, is going to be approved by parliament. This is a very good practice. It is done in the UK and even in other countries. That when a new government comes to power, you set up your physical objectives, which we have been lacking. Now, the only challenge we have with this now are two things. One is that we are going to bring this chapter within one month when the, when the parliament has been sworn in. Edmund, me and you, we know that our parliament settles in after six months, <laughs> a new parliament. Others are still looking for where the offices are, others they don't even know where, how Kampara is, is, where offices in Kampara are. So in one month, it's going to be very difficult for new members of parliament to debate a chapter of fiscal responsibility. Two is that deviation, that after the parliament has approved the key objectives, fiscal objectives of government, the minister may deviate from these policy objectives without the approval of parliament. And again, is that if parliament has, is the one that approves that you are going to achieve these particular objectives, why then don't you go back to the same parliament to say, because of reasons A and B, I'm unable to achieve these objectives, I would like now to deviate. So the parliament can move the debate why you are deviating. And it increases transparency, it increases accountability, but because parliament is a representation of the people of Uganda, we feel that it must have a say if you are going to deviate from this from this particular objective. So that's one key area in this bill, which is good, but also which you want the government to strengthen. That in terms of deviation, you come back to the parliament. Yes. <coughs> well, but briefly, before I go to that, you, you say the, 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 it gives the minister powers to deviate. It's already happening. They can't spend up to three percent. You know, without going back to parliament. Yes, and 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 and, and, and this is what we, we are talking about entirely in this bill. That the minister is becoming a super minister. They are overbearing. Minister. No, he's, no the, the finance minister. The finance yeah. minister. That they are overburdening the minister with so much responsibilities. And that simply because we are human beings, we can error. There is a likelihood that the minister is going to begin to error in making decisions. And therefore, it is important that even when you have made, you have decided you're going to deviate, seek parliamentary approval. And that's what we are, we are looking for. And once that is done, it makes this fiscal sector one of the strongest points in this particular bill. Mr. Kapopwe, from the Ghana Dead Network's perspective, what do you see this bill bringing to us? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, moderator. To add on what uh, Julius Mukunda has said, I would uh, quickly wish to add that as civil society organizations under the CSBAG, we welcome the, the bill in some areas that, for instance, looking at the Budget Act and the Public Finance and Accountability Act, that we need some additional necessary and relevant uh, legislation that matches the times. For instance, in view of the pending oil revenues, is welcome. That the Public Finance Bill is making suggestion that the two major acts, particularly the Budget Act of 2001 and the Public and Finance and Accountability Act of 2003 should be repealed. And looking through the current bill, we do not see the components of those two bills, either two, being reflected in the bill is a matter of concern. In the first place, if we looked at the Budget Act, for instance, it gives authority and avenues through which Parliament can strengthen its participation in scrutinizing the budget proposals, which often are brought by the executive. That in that, under that Act, there is a provision for a parliamentary budget office, particularly for, for mem to support members of Parliament in juggling through the budget uh, proposals at the level of re proposed revenues and also proposed spending areas. Secondly, I acknowledge that um, for members of, not all members of Parliament,
government may necessarily be conversant with the budgeting process. It, they are from a diverse background. Some are medical doctors, for instance. Some are, other, some are teachers, and others are six equivalent, and others are PhDs, other in different areas. But you have a certain office designated and provided for under the Budget Act to support the members of parliament to jump through the budgeting process is, is something that we cannot lose sight of. The bill seems to be losing sight of that. There is an aspect in the bill, of course I may not go into the very specific questions because the listeners out there, perhaps many of them, through their consultations experience has so far shown us that they, do, they have not even seen the public finance bill in its current form. So I am not going to necessarily mention section 14 as opposed to 13, but I'll I will highlight the major areas. The other aspect we are concerned about is there under the Constitution currently and then Public Finance and Accountability Act, there is a provision that the executive through a relevant minister can undertake supplementary spending of up to 3% of the total national budget. In That's the current law. Yes. In the Bill, in the public finance bill, it is proposed that this should be expanded to 10 percent. From 3 percent to 10 percent? Yes. And we are looking at 10 percent, for instance, against the background that, as the President has rightly always said, that the, the budget envelope in this country has been increasing. Right now we are about to, uh, 11 trillion shillings. It means that with the revenue areas, uh, with the revenue areas, with the Expected and gas revenue is expected. This could expand fourfold to fivefold. We would be talking about, for instance, for the man, for the well, but the man is one of the budget. The ten percent of that kind of size of the budget of for the man, children, children, for instance, that you just let it pass at the homes of the different minister or the executive without the necessary, without the Minister can spend up to three percent. Yes. And now the oil is coming. Somebody is saying, let's expand that to ten percent. Yes. Opening the money to the well. We've had a lot of corruption lately. Yes. We already have uh, um, had very many scandals in this country that are corruption related, but also that involve quite high profile individuals. And traditional civil servants in this country that you expand that kind of opportunity to 10 percent is expanding 10 times the opportunity of abuse and that you go not must understand it and look so at instead it. of tightening because yes. the things are at the door yes. we're opening the door wide yes. we're throwing away the padlocks <laughs> mm. julius mukunda talk to us about the budget office the Parliament budget office gives a background. It's an exemplary factor of this parliament. Yes. It's seen as an innovation, mm. a unique innovation by the Ugandan legislature. Yeah. And it's an example to the Commonwealth. Mm. What is happening to the budget office in this bill? I, 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 I think I have, in 2001, when I started actually work on budget advocacy, it, one of the things that we found, that we found ourselves, <coughs> that we found ourselves a challenge, the challenge by then, was that the budget process was closed. It was on the, if you remember, the minister would come and make a, make a speech, and everybody would hold prices. You don't sell on the day of the budget. <laughs> no, you don't because sell on the day. prices yes. and beer prices. And so mm. I remember by then, members of parliament, led by Honorable Winnie Bianima and, and uh, Isaac Musumba, and, uh, and this lady, the lady from the East African Community, the British Secretary General, former. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. yes. They came up with a private member's bill the Budget Act. 
And one of the things they did was to open up the budget process, to increase participation. I remember that was the time in 2001 that we were able to begin to receive budget information from government in time. Mm -hmm. It gave us space to engage parliament because by then we know the indicative figures. They brought the issue about indicative figures that parliament said before you read the budget, first give us the draft estimates. Yes, first give us a plan of what you want to spend on so that we can make an input rather than at the end when Surprise them. Them surprising us. So to do that, they found that actually that they don't have enough capacity as members of parliament to read through these thick and thin documents. You know, you find a document of a thousand pages. Cross print. Cross print. Aggregated figures. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get yes, spreadsheets. So they couldn't understand that one. And they said, no, I think we need experts in our office as parliament. Not that somebody should come and say we need we need an office. No, but a, an office created by an act. And they created a parliamentary budget office to be staffed by experts in financial management, budget analysis, economists, even lawyers, by the way. Not necessarily MPs. Not necessarily MPs. Technical Staff, people. Technical people, mm -hmm. headed by a director who is very conversed with economic and macroeconomic issues. And they put it there. And these guys, over and over again, they were able to get these documents, they were able to read them, analyze them, get information to members of parliament in a way that each and every member of parliament can understand. Even if you are a lawyer, a doctor, whatever kind of So it gave MPs now information to be able to engage government effectively. But they also said we need a budget committee specifically to look at the government resources, how government is coming, money is coming, and how money is getting out. Apart from, and they said this committee must be a committee of an act, made out of an act, and they made a, par a parliamentary budget committee. Now, when they did this, it is a best practice, it is a benchmark in the whole of this world. Everybody wants to know how the budget they works. They come to Uganda to look at the budget office and also to look at the budget committee. At the budget committee, the budget committee has got its members, but all heads, all chairperson of other committees are ex officials. They come and bring their budget of their different sectors and present it to the budget committee, and the budget committee harmonizes everything. So, when now this bill repeals the budget act, they are removing the budget office. And in this bill, they completely remove the budget office and the budget that is committee. Suspect, isn't it? I find to me. What does that tell us about the spirit of this bill? What are they thinking as they bring this? Bill? I, I think for me, Edmund, I just be very <laughs> On this one is that at this time when you are in the position you are planning the oil to come the oil. you are planning the oil to come I don't think you would need a very strong a very strong parliament to begin giving you headache because at oh, the end, at it's the a end, bad thing the strong parliament I, I, I think asking too many questions I, I think if you, have, if you have people are going to start asking too many questions you might, you might, go, you might have problems in terms of, of, the, of the way you want things to run but I, I think when when this these important institutions that help even citizens, even civil society organizations, that help us in understanding the budget process and how we can effectively engage it. And it is now missing this bill. We find that the spirit of this bill is suspended. The president said recently he wants his party, caucus, to have a more direct say in the budgeting process in parliament. What does that tell but, but Edmund, I don't know why. Because they're the ones who make the budget. Because if you look at the committee that is in charge of making this the budget preparation, they're the same because it's the president, the vice president, the prime minister, and other members. Even the chairperson of the budget committee is part of this NLM caucus committee. So I don't know what the difference they are going to make in terms of this budget process. But nevertheless, I, I, I think it's for me it's a, it's a welcoming idea that they should get involved in understanding how resources actually are being uh, done. It will give us an opportunity as a social organization to have another. You see, we have been concentrating on parliament that it has the power to make resources. Yes. Now it has come in light that actually they don't have the power to the power in the caucus. In the, in the parliamentary which is a part of parliament. Which is a part of parliament. So for us, we are now concentrate our, our efforts in the, with the caucus, the caucus. To influence the caucus than the, than the parliament. But it is it is it is absurd. What's wrong with that? It's there still. It's it absurd that an institution, a parliament that we erected as people's representative, is being is now turned into a small caucus that things have been discussed out, not in a formal way, and that now we have a, a parliament that is not going to bite. Julius Kapoor, let's talk about the oil revenues. How well prepared are we to manage oil money? <laughs> Some of it has already started coming. Yeah, th uh, thank you very much. Of course, uh, that is a very fundamental question, and uh, I think it raises perhaps more questions than answers. I think I don't think I should I should say perhaps for uh, purposes of our clarity for our listeners that the public finance bill 
is proposing establishment of what is called a petroleum fund. Mm -hmm. So that is part of the perhaps part of the preparation. Yes. The petroleum fund has got two components. One is called uh, a holding a, 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 an oil, a, a revenue kind of holding account, and the, while the other one is an investment account. Yes. But when funds come in from oil, they put some. Then they should be put on this kind of receiving fund. No, no receiving account. account. Is it fund? Yes, outside the consolidated fund. fund. Yes. In Bank of Uganda. In Bank of Uganda. Yes. 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 Yes.
phone users from incidences of fraud, incitement, terrorism, and hate messages, among others. Please note that SIM card registration is mandatory, and those who fail to register risk having their SIM cards deactivated. All information shall remain confidential. Let's make communication safe. Register your SIM card today. It's so chilling at home with my crew. The boys are waiting to watch the game on the telly, but the chicks want to go to the beach. So how do we play it? A glance across the room. Eye contact is made. A plan is hatched. Pete will get some sand. Lots of it. Jeff will take care of the deco. Tim, the entertainment. And I, the clubs. And so we bring the beach to the apartment. If we can't go to the beach, we bring the beach to us. It's just how we do. It's not about where you're at. It's the difference you bring. Get a fresh take on things. Club is brewed longer for easier drinking. Brewed slower for great taste. Club, tastefully different. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Excuse me, what is this 300 shillings on my bill for? That is for the tented candle, madam. And this 100 shillings? That is for the air conditioning. And this 200 shillings? For the blue walls, ma'am. I can't believe this! Why pay for what you don't use or ask for? That's why we at Standard Chartered are introducing the Easy Go account, the first current account of its kind that gives you complete control of your banking charges. For more details, visit a Standard Chartered branch or call 0414-340077. Would you like to leave me a tip, please? Aro, anti-peace, my way. I could tell I'm at the beach having fun. You know, I have free calls. <laughs> I'm basically recording everybody. But don't get to fry in anti-peace. I'm going to get back to you. Oh, and surrender for. I am my way. Actually, I'm calling everybody. <laughs> don't get off. I will get back to you. Oh, Musei. Musei, uh, I've just forgotten what I wanted to tell you, but remain on right now. As soon as I remember, <laughs> I'll get back to you. Yeah, ma, way. MTN, I am. Enjoy free MTN weekend calls. Load a total of 2,000 shillings or more between Monday and Friday. Dial star 188 hash to activate free MTN weekend calls. MTN, everywhere you go. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. What is the civil society perspective on the public finance bill? How will it affect the budget process? And how revenues from oil and other resources will be managed and utilized? So our guests tonight, Mr. Julius Mukunda, Senior Program Director at Forward as the Forum for Women and Democracy and Coordinator of the Civil Society Budget Action Group. We're also joined by Mr. Julius Kapwepwe, Mishambi, uh, Director of Programs of the Uganda Dead Network. You will be able to call in as well and contribute to this discussion. Before we come to you, Mr. Mukunda, mm -hmm. Mr. Kapwepwe, it looks like the uh, contingency fund will only be three and a half percent and not ten percent. Why do you say it's ten percent? Uh, 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 yeah, you can respond. Let uh, uh, me uh, just respond to that. Yeah, I... The, the, the contingency, the contingency, the contingency fund. Yes. This time around, we have not been having a contingency fund. In the past, we've not had a contingency fund. Have been, have been, the, the, but the, the bill introduces a contingency. It's now operational. Actually, it is operationalizing it because it was in the constitution, but it has not had not been done. Mm -hmm. And the bill is proposing that it should be three and a half percent yes. the appropriated annual budget of government for the previous year. Where does the ten percent come from? Now, the ten percent comes from that the account, the 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 the, 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 the accountant or the, the head of a vote, yes, the, or the head of the vote, may request the minister for a supplementary expenditure of up to ten percent. to ten percent. So ten percent is the supplementary of a particular vote for the head of a vote. The head of a vote can ask for at least ten percent. Now, what it means, our our what we are arguing that it is going to like to be ten percent is that when you allow a sector that it can it has up to ten percent. If what if all sectors decide to ask for it, ask for, for it, the budget goes on the year out. Then now it it goes up. What we are proposing is that let it also still remain within the three point five percent of the contingency fund, so that people know that we so are still with. Do you it. think that's what could affect the economy? In, in yes. Case. Now, in terms of, um, of, of of that affecting economy, is that you see when you when, when you debate a budget and pass it, yes. when you debate when you debate a budget and pass it, 
and you decide now to begin supplementary spending all the time, you are weakening the whole of the budget process. In terms of predictability, it becomes difficult for any right. investor to, be, to predict that actually this is going to happen because any time you're going to change it. No, but the argument is this plan, the contingency plan, basically is trying to remove those supplementary budgets which are not very much liked. So when you have them, then you don't need a supplementary budget in the end. I mean, I, I mean, I mean you, can, you, can, you, can, you can also add that, I think, because uh, but the contingency fund actually, the most, the, 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 the most important thing why we wanted the contingency fund was to deal with the, our natural disasters. In fact, it is a very, a very welcoming move in this deal mm. that the contingency fund, that 80% of the contingency fund is, is mis- specifically for natural resources. Bududa, Bududa, Bududa and, yeah. and, and maybe the, you know, the nodding yeah. disease. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, specifically for natural disasters mm. and the remaining percent is only to, is going to, only to be used for the supplementary expenditures. Julius Kapkope, talk to us about, you say that uh, the budget 49 trillion, is going to jump from 10 trillion to 4, 11 trillion to 49 trillion. How does it do that job? Yeah, I, I, I was uh, give, giving a, a scenario because, for instance, if you look at... If Let's get the perspective here. Not all the oil money is going into the consolidated fund. In other words, it won't be on the cash account. It's got, some of it will be invested. It will be in a, an NRF, a national resource fund in the central bank. Yeah. We are looking at, if you looked through the government literature, car- the current government literature, there is a high inclination of doing planning based on the anticipated revenues from oil and gas. So whether that at that material time a certain sum is invested elsewhere offshore or elsewhere and how much of it remains is the director goes into the budget to support implementation. The fact is that there is high expectation on the anticipated revenues. And for instance if we looked at uh, at oil, yes. about US dollars, 250 billion in form of revenues. 250 yes. billion. No, no, let's get it clearly. We don't expect more than 25, uh, roughly 25 billion dollars from oil in 10 years. Yeah, over the, over the, over, over that period. 35 billion yes. in 10 years. Yes, over that period. Yes. So you can clearly see that even if you, you, you did the simple calculation, that the budget will be supported handsomely by the oil revenues. So that means that it, from the current level, it could, it it could, the budget. It could go to any figure. The, the budget could right. increase threefold. It's a supposition. It could, it, it could so increase fourfold. No. It's a supposition. Yeah. How ideally, of course, it's not such a big thing when you look at the figures. 25 billion shillings will still be poorer than Bill Gates. <laughs> One man. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 years, he has it already yeah. in the bank account. Yeah. Let's go to something yeah. else that makes yeah. it, uh, give us, gives us a smile. How do, should these monies be spent in actual fact? The oil monies when they come in. Yeah, we, 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 we are looking at, of course, as I said earlier, there is the proposed investment aspect, which is called the invest, under the petroleum fund that will be established, the investment account. That talks about how those kinds of funds can be uh, c- can be invested. Yes. It can, of course, it is also interesting, and that is... Uh, let's, let's try to look at figures. Maybe that will make it easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The consolidated fund. How much money should come to that? Let's assume we're getting $3 billion a year. Yeah. How much should we put into the budget? How much should we you know, put away in... Uh, the, no, but, but, yeah, the, the, bill, the bill under, uh, perhaps this will shed some light. The bill in Section 55 says that now, regardless of the amount that comes, yes. that for avoidance of doubt, petroleum revenue shall be used for financing of infrastructure and development projects of government and not recurrent expenditure of government. Development. In, development yes. Of the yes. Oh, so on the development aspect of the budget. Yes. Of course, the, the, the underlying uh, motivation of this proposal is that we are looking at the future generation, yes. which is absolutely fine. The only question is, how about the present generation? What happened? What becomes of it? Well, some of it would have gone into the current, current budget salaries for the Yes, but the, the bill is very clear on recurrent expenditure. What does it say? It, is, it, 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 it does not entertain recurrent expenditure of government. No money should be taken from oil to... For, for salaries, for... Even <laughs> for the be a distortion because if you invest in infrastructure, you're technically expanding the economy, improving efficiencies, and so on and so forth. Yes. But the current side requires some more money as well. Yes, it is. I, I can give an example. If you are talking about, for 
for instance, the health sector in this country. Yes. If you if you build a lot of money, if you put it in the salaries, it is something welcome. That's the development expenditure. The math to do the operation, you know, to, 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 to do the running in that health unit, that, for instance, is considered under recurring. The, the math who needs, who needs to go for out immunization outreach in the communities there, and the money for lunch and that, those bits, that is recurring. And here it is clearly stated that that, the old revenue should not go to that area. Already, we've had, we've been having problems in this country where the recurrent even expense alone is insufficient. Therefore, you have an ambulance, but the ambulance, because it lacks There's petrol, it does, it has one out powers, is is literally useless in that kind of health center, and therefore, in terms of service delivery, it is literally useless. So there's but a disconnect. There should be, we think that there should be an opportunity for parliament, for instance, as the people's representatives, to have a discussion and a, a scrutiny of some of the proposals. We, we are against a predetermined position that this money should restrict the good infrastructure. What is wrong, for instance, if we did a balance of, of some sort? Yeah, can we, you can't can afford that, can you? Can you a hospital, which is a capital expense, you're going to need doctors to run it. Somebody, somebody who needs school fees to go to school today needs that and money uh, now. Most likely, it will have to be resolved, right? I don't see how it Yes, that is the But you see, Edmund, the, the question is here. Yes, for tomorrow. What about today's needs? We don't have enough teachers, we don't have enough doctors, we don't... People, students need loans. You, you're not going to take... Let's look at it realistically. Yes. Most likely that is going to be corrected because it's an anomaly. I'm you hoping. cannot build hospitals and not have doctors' money. Definitely. As you, we assume it's going But let's talk about something else. Former Minister for Finance, mm -hmm. Ezra Shroom, my doctor, mm -hmm. says at Trump stage, he said in the public forum, he said he's opposed to a lot of money being spent on the roads and all this infrastructure because it goes back to the big companies in the West. I, I, I think the, 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 the point that was we are trying to make here, even today actually it was made, in the, it was it was mentioned in the budget in the budget conference. One is that our our that our we don't have contractors with the capacity to manage some of these contracts, yes. and therefore you will depend on Chinese contractors, Indian contractors, Malaysian contractors who will take all this money out. And therefore, if I want to invest heavily in this infrastructure, this money again is going to be taken is going to be taken abroad. So what is the problem of us building capacity of our local entrepreneurship so that they can be able to manage these big contracts. Districts are suffering because all these contractors in the, in the districts, they start a contract today, tomorrow they have dried up because they cannot finance it and finish it. So why can't this all the money help us to build the capacity of our local entrepreneurs and the contractors so that they, can, they are able to, to, uh, to, to, to do that? And for me, there's one question by the way to, to put across. Yes. Who, who, if this is our money, this oil is for the every citizen. Why don't we vote on how we want to spend this money? Yes. Because I think the case uh, what I understand in Alaska, they could report everybody to vote on how their money is supposed to be done and they created the fund. Everybody has a share has, has shares in that fund. Mm -hmm. Why don't we have an, a, a, refer a referendum and they ask us how do you want your money to be spent? Where should very few people sit down? Let's first do this. No, I think this is a question is a matter of national importance. Yeah. Like every government should be asked. In my view, surely I should be asked to say where do you want your money to be? The first thing I would think, do you know what? Please create a company where I have a share. So that wherever you invest the money at the end of the year, you give me a dividend that I take it home. Let's try to, get, man, let's 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 try to get some more self care about this. Mm -hmm. You invest in infrastructure, it grows yeah. the economy, yeah. then you collect more taxes. Yeah. How does that not flow? There is, we, 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 you know, the taxes, we do not have collect more revenues, then you pay salaries. We do not have a problem with investment in infrastructure. In fact, the incentives that infrastructure development can bring to this country, can bring to this economy, are known. Those are not debatable. The challenge is when by law, under the current bill, therefore it subsequently, if it passed into law in its current form, it means that by law, you have predetermined yeah. where that money should be put. Yes. Now, the, 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 the notion, space for the, the, the notion, the notion of investing in infrastructure is to look at mainly long-term development. But the question is, how about the needs of today? 
before I can leave alone, the payment okay. is mm. when you invest in infrastructure, mm. the economy is going faster, and then you collect more money. And that, that, is also, that is also that is also why should you spend money like that? That, 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 that Julius, currently we have not stopped government from investing in infrastructure, have we? Yeah. Do we require a law that it please make sure you spend money? What's wrong? What's wrong? No. What's wrong? This, the, the, the challenge here we are seeing is that you cannot determine. In fact, one of the issues that we have raised is that you are actually removing powers from from parliament to determine how resources are supposed to be allocated by that particular time. Because the needs of the then and now are different. So if you determine it into your law that please infrastructure. What if by then, setting it in concrete. Yes, this, no, this law is going to stay forever. What if by then we no longer need infrastructure? What is going to happen? I want to keep I will not keep the money. I give an example of Karangara. Yes. When they would send the money to, to Karangara to construct roads, they would the government parties construct roads. Karangara never had roads. They would bring back money to the to, 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 to the center because they never had they roads. Never had so that was not a priority then. Right. But so predetermining means two things. One is that what are the needs of today? Two is that you are using the powers of parliament to determine resource allocation. Let's hear from the listeners. This is by Trump on Radio One. Our number is zero four one four three four eight one 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 zero three one two two six zero three nine zero zero three one two two six one three nine zero. When you call in, please tell us in the man where you are calling from. <coughs> yes, talk to us a little bit more about that. Normally, Julius Kapoor. Yeah, you say it's. Uh, you don't think spending on infrastructure will expand the economy fast enough to grow the tax revenue base? No, spending on infrastructure is not a problem. Our argument is that before you can achieve long-term development, you also need to take care of the current needs. Children who need to feed now, now cannot wait for an for an express highway, for instance, on the, on the, on camp, with the Entebbe Kampala Road that will free road tour over time get uh, earn an income out of that initial investment. The hospitals that need to run today, the police officers, if you look at those police women, for instance, yes. who went on strike with their husbands, with their husbands, because perhaps there is little to cook at that material time, because perhaps the good medication back home is wanting, because perhaps their children All right, let's are not at school. Let's it's easy to look at. Yes, sir, your name? Good evening. Yes. in Uganda, but experts say it will take about 6,000 years for it to be the quantities <laughs> required for exploitation. Julius Kabobo. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Kenya. The bill provides that districts actually can can determine and through, like, where there are particular exists cultural institutions that certain sums of out of all revenues can go to that kind of an institution. Two and a half percent. The challenge, the percentage is not indicated. They, even there, there is a bill. That, that is a good move. It's a proposal. Yes, it's a proposal under the bill. That, that is a good move. The bill does not specify on who. Another color spectrum, hello. Yes, ma'am, your name? Come again. Yes, Lena. Spectrum, hello. Oh, Let's go. Oh. 
Okay. The question on how, for instance, the cultural institutions will benefit. The bill makes some proposals. It says the district will determine. Of course, it's actually the sub counties that give the kings money. The district and then sub counties. The, the, the sub counties decide. The bill, the bill itself says it is the district. This doesn't say it is a sub county. Of course, what does district mean in the case of Uganda? Does it mean the district council? Does it mean the RDC? Does it mean the DC? Does it mean the, cow, the chief administrative office? It is imperative that in matters of law, for avoidance of doubt, you are as clearest as possible you can. It has to be determined who in the RDC, who in the district, should be responsible for that kind of. And again, to agree with Viridian, for instance, that if you have an agricultural bank in this country, yes. if you have a pensioners fund in this country. Like if, if, if you have a, a student scholarship scheme in this country, a certain mechanism designed to help us invest in some of those other areas. In fact, beyond expanding those other sectors, you are also you are also expanding opportunities for prudent accountability of public resources. I can give a quick example. If you established an agricultural bank Yes. You do not need necessarily the Ministry of Finance directly, except perhaps for the Auditor General's office, to go and manage the nitty of that kind of a fund. So a 50 billion or a, one, a 500 billion in that bank is already being taken care of through expectations of prudent financial management under the banking institutions in Uganda. If you have a pensions fund, an example I could take is like NSSF, but many other for those people who have retired, for instance, and are living in destitute in this country, are we going to keep watching? If you have the pension fund, for instance, that takes care of that category of people, which under the Minister of Gender Government has been trying to, to do anyway, uh, then already you are expanding opportunities for prudent accountability. It means that an institution like MSSF does not have to depend on... Right. on, on uh, Hello, yes. yes. Uh, uh, tell Ambrose what it uh, says. Mm -hmm. What it says: sharing of revenue from from relatives. It says that the government shall retain 93 percent of the oil revenues, and the rest of the seven percent shall be shared among the district located within the petroleum exploration and production areas. Seven mm -hmm. percent will be given to to, to, to those districts, and uh, so only those ones. And the rest will be paid by government, so right. that, or uh, any other person can be. So Whether the, the share is more or bigger. I think that's another debate. Mm. Well, because I remember the, the Uniro King wanted the, was it 15% or something like that? So, and the original plan, I think the draft of the finance was 12.5%, mm. they've raised the 7%. 7%. For, for all the districts in the in the region share uh, it. To, to, to share it. But there's something which, which, which Kapupe said, and which is which you need to emphasize. One is that out of this money on the realities, a district may, in a consultation with the minister responsible for culture and local government, give the king some cash. Grant a share of the royalties to the district to a cultural or a traditional institution. So the cultural leader has to go and sit at a bench. Yeah, and beg the for it. Yeah. But for but us, we say, when you say district, we need to be an RDC, a DISO, a CAO. We need to be specific in this the and say the district council. For example, we provide the district council, which is in charge of allocating resources within the district, should be the one mentioned here. Otherwise, when you leave it as a district, any leader of the district can decide to share that. Well, the original draft, I looked at the original. It's what you spoke about the sub -count. They've improved it. No, yeah, 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 it's, 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 of course, the, 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 the version of the, perhaps for the, the purposes of listeners, that the version of the bill keeps changing as it gets a new input, a new insights, a new realities. And also, to perhaps to add to what uh, uh, Kenya Ambrose has said, you do not have to be satisfied. This is a bill. You can only 
come forth and make your own proposals yes. when there is still an opportunity. And this is opportunity. This is the opportunity. Does, about corruption. does it address corruption at any level? Or it assumes oh. we are clean men and women? No, 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 no. no. I, I think this is, a, this is another area, uh, Edmond, uh, we, we need to improve on in this bill. Uh, the bill uh, on section 74 talks about offenses under the bill. There are so many offenses. Uh, if you have not uh, properly provided information in this bill, if you, may, if you make a loss, you are supposed to making a loss, a number of offenses. But two things. One is that you are liable to uh, when we converted the currency points, they are talking about 25, uh, talking about the currency points. When we converted the currency points, they are talking the about currency the currency point is 20,000. Yeah. When we convert it to, the, to, to when we convert the currency points of the bill, it comes to 100 million yes. as a punish, maximum punishment you can get you if a abrogate or you are not in tandem with this, with this, with this, uh, with this bill. 100, 100 million or a jail term not more than four years. Yes. Anyone, me and you, we know that the levels and the scales of our of our co corruption is not in millions now; it's in billions. Well, it's very growing. Country. So it does not scare me to dip my hand into the into the into the public funds. Hundred million is petty cash. Is petty cash. So we would feel that here we would increase the current point to equivalent to at least a billion and life imprisonment. Well, but someone will will bear that in mind and say we raise. Oh, fine, yeah. yeah. Because if we throw somebody in prison for life and billion. For life, then I think it would be scare so many people in terms of uh, in terms of trying to, to dip their hands into government.